My name is uh, Carl Magnus Hergkorp, and I'm the acting CEO of Sykeson. It's a pleasure to be here to present Sykeson and, and our activities working in the field of autoimmune disease, developing uh, th uh, transformative therapies for autoimmune disease. Uh, just a brief disclaimer here regarding forward-looking statements. We are listed on NASDAQ First North under the uh, ticker Sykeso. So Sykeson is a Malmö-based company. We were founded in 2015. Uh, we are roughly a team of 15 people. Sykeson has two assets. Uh, one small molecule, Rebeximod, which is indicated for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and then we have a cyclotide called T20K, which, where we see potential in multiple sclerosis. Our main, more advanced, most advanced asset is Rebeximod, uh, which is about to enter phase 2B clinical studies in rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and then T20K is still in preclinical research and development. So I'd first like to uh, briefly uh, tell you a little bit, little bit about uh, recent developments in the T20K project. As you know, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease which uh, still has uh, significant med medic unmet medical needs. Uh, it is a disease that affects women primarily uh, in quite young ages. And we see that roughly two and a half to three million people live with uh, multiple sclerosis today. Um, in US alone, one million people live with uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, it uh, targets, uh, it's the immune system actually that targets neurons in the central nervous system. And we see that T20K has potential to um, actually impact on disease progression quite early in the disease phase. So T20K is modulating the immune system by uh, targeting um, T cells and uh, T cell modulation through a very important cytokine called IL-2. Uh, we have demonstrated in preclinical models that T20K impacts on the disease course in a preventive fashion, seen here to the left, and also in a therapeutic fashion, seen to the right. Uh, our latest development is actually to combine T20K with a cap opioid receptor agonist. Uh, and we have demonstrated here that the combination of T20K and a cap upward re uh, receptor agonist is uh, quite interesting since we uh, achieve uh, synergies with these two molecules. Um, when treating multiple sclerosis, you really want to do two things. You want to have one drug that impacts on the immune system and uh, suppress the immune reaction towards uh, the neurons. But you also would like to have a drug that can repair and uh, facilitate remyelination of the neurons. So recently, uh, from research at, in New Zealand, it's been actually discovered that uh, kappa opioid receptor agonist can facilitate the remyelination process. So I think this combination with T20K can be very interesting by both impacting on the immune system and potentially also facilitate remyelination. Of course, we're very excited about uh, these findings and we'll continue to look at this in the preclinical setting. Uh, I'm now jumping over to uh, rheumatoid arthritis and our most advanced uh, program here, uh, Rebeximod. So as you know, rheumatoid arthritis is a debilitating uh, disease that affects uh, the joints. It's a, a chronic disease. Uh, leading to pain, of course, and uh, tendons, swollen joints, joint deformities, and potential bone erosion. It requires a lifelong medical treatment. What we see today is that many, up to 50% of patients, do not benefit at all from the standard of care. Uh, so there is certainly a strong demand for new drugs on the market for rheumatoid arthritis especially oral medications to provide an opportunity for patients to manage uh, the disease themselves. Uh, 
So today, currently, side effect and the lack of treatment response is driving innovation. As I mentioned, uh, over 50% do not benefit from the standard of care and need to be uh, escalated to more advanced therapies such as the biologics and JAK inhibitors. And also, it's very important, uh, the lack of treatment response early in the disease course is actually determining the long-term outcome of rheumatoid arthritis. So it's very important to early in the disease course actually make a disease modifying change. What is um, driving this is, uh, so recent findings here depicted on the right demonstrate uh, that resident macrophages and resident T memorial cells in the joints are actually part of driving the disease and disease flares. And if you don't impact on that early, it will lead to a continued accumulation of affected joints. Uh, and also as seen here, resident macrophages are established quite early in the disease course, even before you actually have clinical signs and being diagnosed. So jumping to um, the mode of action of uh, Rebeximod. So Rebeximod is targeting macrophages, and, and it's been postulated now for 20 years that the primary aim of a successful treatment to RA should really be to reduce the numbers of pro-inflammatory macrophages in the joints. And today, still, there are no uh, treatments or therapies that are targeting macrophages, but is out there um, on the market and also in deve development is uh, molecules that are targeting single molecular targets downstream of macrophages. And this is what we see that Rebeximod can actually uh, make it uh, different. So Rebeximod has been demonstrated to actually very selectively target pro-inflammatory macrophages. It not only, not only impacts on the function of macrophages driving uh, immune response, but it also impacts on the differentiation of macrophages, the establishment of macrophages. So seen here to the right in preclinic model, if we provide Rebeximod at the time point when macrophages establish themselves to drive the disease, we can very effectively suppress the disease progression. The clinical implication of that is seen here in our phase 2B or phase 2A study in severe uh, patients with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, so these patients have been living very long with disease. They have uh, 18 to 20 tender swollen joints uh, and they are in disease flare. Uh, providing Rebeximod to these patients, we see that uh, after week 8 and week 12, we actually provide some benefit to these patients. However, what is very interesting in this study is that after the end of treatment, week 12, we see that these patients continue to improve. And we see this as a sign of <coughs> a true disease-modifying effect with Rebeximod. Uh, just to put this a little bit in context, uh, all, albeit that we, are, we ran this study on very severe patients, but we do have treatment effects that is certainly on par with many of the marketed drugs, biologics out there. Uh, so why is it important to target macrophages? Well, macrophages are the drivers of inflammation, uh, and especially the NF-kappa B uh, signaling pathway uh, is driving inflammation. However, in the normal setting, um, NF-kappa B is modulated by a protein called A20. In patients with rheumatoid arthritis and many other autoimmune and autoinflammatory diseases, the A20 protein is deficient through small mutations. So we need to have something that can sort of compensate for this loss of function by A20. And this is where we see Rebeximod come in. Uh, we see Rebeximod as a very interesting second-line treatment alternative to patients that are on uh, standard of care metrixate, but also especially on patients that have stopped responding to metrixate. Uh, and this way we see that uh, there's an opportunity to delay and prevent uh, treatment escalation and also simplify the treatment regimens. Uh, the upcoming Phase 2B study that is uh, planned, a phrase, uh, is aligned for 
the current treatment needs. So we have patient cohorts that have not been diagnosed for this, with the disease for as long. Um, and we are targeting a patient po population that has an inadequate response to metrexate. Uh, in this study, we have a longer readout to collect more safety and efficacy data, 24 weeks. And we have also optimized the endpoint readout at week 16, picking up on our learnings from the previous study. Uh, the study will be run in 45 sites in eight countries. Uh, all sites are uh, already approved for the study. Uh, we are waiting still for uh, a couple of uh, uh, regulatory uh, authority approvals in Hungary and Georgia. Uh, the study is approved in Poland already. So we see uh, rebeximod as a very interesting oral alternative uh, to really feel a, a feel a void in the current treatment landscape. The current oral available ter therapies are burdened with a lot of safety concerns. The JAK inhibitors, as of last year, received a class-wide wide, uh, black box warning uh, due to malignancy and findings of uh, uh, quite major cardiovascular events. And metotrexate, all be being used for quite some time, is a drug with a lot of uh, safety concerns. Of course, Rebex mode will enter multi-billion market, and we do certainly see potential for business here. So, in short, uh, to sum up, Rebex mode is a, a small molecule that uh, targets uh, central disease drivers through a new model, of, a new mode of action. We have documented phase two uh, beef efficacy and a favorable safety and tolerability profile, a convenient oral administration form, and we are targeting large market with large underserved patient segments. And of course, we see favorable partnership opportunities here. And with this, I would like to conclude and take some questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes? Right off the bat. <laughs> Thanks, Carl Magnus. Um, it's a, certainly an interesting area. Um, the MS project, you mentioned that IL-2, regulation of IL-2 is the mode of action. Is that the main mode of action? Or, and how does that, the T20, how does, does that sort of compete with you know, traditional anti, IL-2 antibodies or whatever? Uh, well, the concept of modulating IL-2 is nothing new. We have a number of ver known uh, molecules yeah. out there, uh, also sort of cyclotide type of molecules like cyclosporin, for instance. Uh, so what will be key uh, when entering a market uh, with these molecules is, of course, to, to see the, uh, how, how a product like T20K can... Um, potentially be better from a safety perspective. And currently, that's what we see. We have actually run this study in the phase one program. Uh, so we have an understanding of how uh, it sort of works in, in the human setting and also have the safety in place. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. I was just curious about uh, the rationale for placing uh, this drug as the second line alternative knowing that the price of TNF-alpha blockade is coming down and these drugs are becoming really well established? Yeah, you're right. The price will adjust on the biologics, of course, now with uh, also biosimilars coming out. Um, but what, what is seen is that the price is not... Um, the, the price is not changing a lot, so even the biosimilars are quite expensive on the market. Uh, with a small molecule, we have a much cheaper COGS and, of course, can compete on price. Uh, and also, when talking to KOLs, KOLs, they are interested in drugs that are orally available. So if you can have, if you stopped responding, you know, it can be after the first 12 weeks of dosing on metotrexate that you realize that you did not actually benefit from metotrexate, that you have to move over to something else. Uh, if you can then take a new oral pill, I think that's uh, desirable over taking an injection. You know, it could be the subcutaneous or, or intravenous injections that you have from the biologics. 
I, I see your point, but also the TNF alpha blockade has proven to be quite effective. But I do agree there are room for more small molecules in treatment of rheumatic diseases. So yeah. good luck. Very interesting project. Yeah. I can also comment here, so not only the metrics that inadequate responders are, is a group of interest. Uh, when talking to the KOLs, in, especially in US, uh, they see that they would like to have new drugs with new modes of action that they can actually provide to uh, the 30 to 40 percent that stop responding to the biologics. So there's also a segment there. And leading on from that, if you were just to sum up for, for the general person, how would uh, Rebexmer change the treatment of, of RA? I, I think the most important aspect here is that we can provide an oral drug that uh, seems to have very good safety profile. Uh, if we can have a drug that uh, does not affect uh, every, you know, these patients' uh, everyday life, um, I think that's, that's quite interesting and desirable. And that's what we see also. The safety profile with Rebex mod is quite fascinating. And what does the research and development look like in this area? Are there any obvious competitors doing something similar? Uh, yeah, so it's very interesting considering that uh, this area uh, is a big market. Uh, you have Humira, it's the second best selling drug in the world for 20 million per year. Uh, you have the jack inhibitor selling for 5 billion US per year. So certainly there's a, a, a great willingness to pay within this area. Uh, you don't have the competition as you see in oncology, for instance. You know, here in Sweden we probably have more than 100 oncology projects ongoing, but worldwide in rheumatoid arthritis, there are in total 120 companies or development uh, projects. So uh, the comp competition is totally different. Uh, a lot of development still with the jack inhibitors. There was, you know, the jack inhibitors were quite effective. Uh, but now, of course, one needs to look at this in a different way uh, based on the findings with the jack inhibitors. And then just to finish off, a couple of questions about the, the study. You said you were still waiting for some approvals. Is there a timeline at all for what? <laughs> I'm guessing no? <laughs> yeah, no. Of course, we're waiting very patiently for uh, these approvals, and they've taken much longer than we anticipated. Uh, there are a number of, of explanations for this. Of course, things that are happening around the world is, is uh, uh, making uh, this uh, a, a lot of uncertainty around this. We are running the study in the Eastern Europe part uh, and um, uh, yeah, so some technical glitches have um, delayed the process both in Georgia and Hungary, but we uh, expect that we will have uh, these approvals hopefully soon. And I saw Mike moving, so he must have a question. <laughs> yeah, just a small question uh, around the clinical trial again. You're running it together with metotrexate. Um, do you see any synergies between the two mechanisms, or is this just a result of the current treatment sort of standard of care? Uh, we are running it on top of metotrexate, but this is on patients that have stopped responding to metotrexate. So we don't expect that metotrexate should provide uh, too much uh, of, of an efficacy in, in this combination. Um, and, and also, it's really very much driven by the, the um, development guidelines, both from FDA and EMA, where you actually start out on that population of patients. And that's why you also have quite a, quite a, a big unmet medical need currently. And with that, I think you're off the hook. So thank you thank so you. much for <laughs> Thanks a lot.